Hello. I am Charles Haddon Spurgeon, and I pastor the Metropolitan Tabernacle in London, England, where we have some 6,000 members in attendance each Sunday. I wish to share with you what God has laid upon my heart. I believe we do not spend enough time in the occasion of prayer. I know that I do not. But we have here in the book of Luke, chapter 18, beginning in verse 1, a story of a widow. It is called the importunate widow because she importuned this judge. If I might read this passage to you. In the book of Luke, chapter 18, beginning in verse 1, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. Here is our story. A widow who had recourse to come before a judge. But our Lord Jesus Christ is giving us a parable about prayer. He tells us that men ought always to pray and not to faint. I believe our Lord Jesus Christ says this because we are much better at fainting than we are at praying. I think so often our prayers are like the runaway knocks of the little street urchins in the city of London. These young boys steal up the stairs of a great house. They ring the bell or they knock upon the door and then they run away. And the butler comes and he opens the door and there was no one there and he shuts the door and they run up and they knock again and they run away. And after a while the butler realizes he is being made fun of and he does not answer the door anymore. But I think so often our prayers are like this. We knock upon the very gates of heaven. We knock upon the throne of God. But before God can answer, before he has recourse to answer our prayer, we run away and we leave it. We forget. Our Lord Jesus Christ is giving us this wonderful example. He is trying to inculcate into us the earnestness, the fervency that we should have when we pray. But our Lord Jesus Christ does so not because he wishes only to instruct us. He instructs us not only with his words, but by his example. Time after time after time in the scripture, we read, he withdrew apart to pray. He spent all night in prayer. Our Lord prayed in the garden there in Gethsemane before his crucifixion. And so our Lord Jesus Christ not only taught, but he did what we should do. In our text, first, we should notice the design of the parable. Secondly, we shall examine the two actors in it. And thirdly, we shall dwell upon the power which is represented as triumphant in this element of prayer. Let us consider the Lord's design in this parable. He is very forthright. He says to those in the hearing of his voice, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, can we do this? Can we live our lives day after day, always praying, never eating, never sleeping, never working? There have been others who have tried this, and they have died in their very example. No, I, I believe that our Lord was telling us that when he said men ought always to pray and not to faint, that we ought always to be in the spirit of prayer. We ought always to be ready to pray. That there should be nothing in our lives between ourselves and the Savior that would prevent us from coming to the throne of grace that would prevent us from coming before God himself. The story is told that the knights of old in the crusades slept in their armor with their swords in their hand so that at any moment should the need arise, they could get up and they would be ready to fight, ready to do battle. And so it is that we ought always to be in this spirit of prayer. So often I think back to the days of the Armada here in England, when the Spanish ships were coming, there were beacons set all along the coast 
because they did not know from whence the attack would come. And when the attack came, this man lighted the beacon and the far person saw the beacon and he lighted his and so the word spread throughout all of England. And so our prayers should rise as a sweet smelling savor into the nostrils of God as we pray and others begin to pray with us that we ought always to be ready to pray, that our fire should be ready, the wood should be ready, that everything should be in readiness for the beacon to go out. And so I believe our Lord would have us understand that we ought always to be in the spirit of prayer. But I think all, something else that our Lord Jesus Christ was trying to share with us is that when our Lord says we ought always to pray, that he also meant that the whole of our lives should be a life dwelt in God, a life given to devotion to God. Prayer and praise with sins forgiven bring down earth to the bliss of heaven. Our life psalm should be composed of alternating verses of prayer and praise until we get to the next world where prayer may cease and we will spend eternity in praise with the Almighty. That we should live as to promote God's glory. We should always be in that spirit of prayer. We ought to always have our lives given to prayer. We should have a life given devotion, of devotion to God, of prayer and praise before God. If we cannot pray, the fault is with ourselves, not with God. Because God is always ready to hear. God, God is always ready for our prayers to arise. We are a royal priesthood and our prayers may always go to glory. Our prayers may always rise to God himself. And so I believe not only does our Lord Jesus Christ wish us always to be in a spirit of prayer, I believe he always wishes our lives to be ready to pray. But there is a third meaning that I think our Lord intended here that to convey to us, and that was this, that we ought always to pray, that we ought to persevere in prayer. I believe this is his first meaning, his primary meaning, that we should not only always pray, but we should keep on praying. We should persist in our prayer day by day, week by week, as we bring those before the throne of grace. We should pray for God to draw others to himself. We should pray every day for our needs. We should pray day after day, repeated blessings. We should not have the runaway knocks of little boys. We should not knock upon the gates of heaven and then run before our Lord has had opportunity to answer. And I believe that he tells us that we ought always to pray. We should persevere in prayer. We should keep on praying. But I think he also means this that we should be more frequent in prayer. I believe the Lord is telling us we ought always to pray, that we ought always to bring our prayers before God. And so I believe God is giving, the Lord Jesus Christ is giving us a number of elements here that we should exercise the universality of supplication. That Jesus says to us, we are.